Hey guys, I'm Brian, and this is Smoky CNC Woodworks. And today we are going to go over something roughly. I mean, I'm not going to get real technical with it, but we're going to go over the wiring of basically the brains of the CNC. It's where the breakout board is, uh, how it wires into the the drivers, and how I've done my power sources. Because each one of your motors and each one of your drivers will come with its at least mine did. Mine came, I've got four power sources, four drivers, and I'm just going to basically show you how I've set mine up. Uh, I'll try to tell you where they're plugging in, but I'm not going to get real technical. I mean, I'm not going to explain to you what each of the ports does, because honestly, I don't remember anymore. I did that research over a year ago, and uh, where it's at. I mean, I didn't write it down. I just had a bunch of web pages pulled up and I was doing most of the research on the internet. And so when I finally found a good diagram and a good example, somebody had a good example of this setup of the wiring, I just went with it because their system was working well and I had the exact same motors, the same drivers, and the same breakout board, so I just did their way. And if I can find a link to that, I'll put it in here. I honestly don't even remember where I found it. I think I found it in a forum, and I don't know which forum it was anymore. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm just going to give you a brief rundown of the, like I call it, the brains of the whole machine. It's where everything gets sent to the motors, and you're going to learn that I use a lot of the same colors of wire because I just bought one big spool, and, or a couple of big spools, and just used the same wire because I knew what I was doing with it. So here we go. Okay, so right here we're going to just give you a basic overview of what we got. Here are my power sources, all four of them. You can see my breakout board right up there. Down here at the other end, you can see all four of my drivers. And then these other things you see here and here. These are just exhaust fans that I added just because I didn't want the heat getting up inside this box. And the reason I have it sealed, and you'll see my foam around the edges here. So I put a lid on it, that way I minimize the amount of dust that gets in. The fan down at this end actually goes into ducting that you can see right back there. And it goes into a clean air box. So I minimize the amount of dust I get in here around this equipment. And as you can see, it's fairly dust free. This is just wood shavings for whenever I was uh, putting the top on it and it's flaking off. So I'm just gonna do a quick run through right here. And then I'm going to bring the camera over to my side, and it's going to be a little more shaky because it'll be in my hand. But I'm just going to give you a basic idea of what I'm doing, and then I'm going to show you exactly where I'm putting every wire. So right here, you can see that I have blue, white, and black. The blue wire is actually in the ground, and I have just wired these power sources up in series. And I've gone ground to ground to ground to ground, and then you can... I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll zoom in a little bit there. Okay, so when I zoom in there, you can see that my bear is going to the ground. My white is going to the neutral. My black is going to the power right down here on the end. And uh, that's where each one of the neutral and the grounds are all wired in series because they're just going to go to the same thing anyway. Okay, so I'm holding the camera in my hand, so we're going to be a little shakier. So right here you can see i got blue to ground, white to neutral, black to power. And so I have just jumped them from one power box to the other on all of them until I get to the last one where you can see my power cord coming in. And then the bear is neutral. I'm sorry, the bear is ground. The white is neutral and the black is power. And so that's it's the same wiring on all four of these. It's just this one has two wires going into each of those. So by doing that, I've tied them all in series and they're wired up the same. So the unfortunate thing I did whenever I wired this is I used red and black wires on all of them. <laughs> and so I can't really differentiate which of these in these bundles down here go to what uh, driver on the other end because it's all the same color wires <clears throat> but just knowing how to wire one will get you 
you'll figure out how to wire the others because all of them are wired the same. So right here, the red is your hot or the V positive and the black is your V negative. And so what I've done is run those down and you can see I've got them all zip tied up and together so I can actually trace each of those. So what I've done is I'll go down to one of these that I can get to, let's see, maybe that back one. Okay. So obviously the V negative goes in my very first slot right there. The V positive goes in the second slot. Then all the other slots there are the wires for my motor. So this is one motor, one motor, one motor, and so on. So that's where those wires go through from the power source. So the power is being brought in right here. And so on my motors, I just use white wire, but I color coded them with a, a Sharpie. And so I've got green, red, yellow, and white. And so I just basically did that off of the off the motor, and I just went with whatever color came on the motor, and those are the colors that were on it. Okay, so now we're going to go with wiring a driver. And so the very first slot here is power alarm. Uh, don't ask me about all the <laughs> all the labelings of this. I'm not sure what each and every one is doing, and I'm not understanding. I don't remember all of it. I researched this well before I did it, and that's how I came up with this wiring pattern. So from there, you see I've got a white wire that runs. It runs to my breakout board. I've got all tangled up here. It runs up to my breakout board. It goes down here in this VDD slot. So that one goes there. And then from there, I've ran a jumper from the first slot to the third slot. Again, don't ask me why. This is the diagram or the example I found. And his was working well, so I did it. Mine's worked well. So he ran, uh, ran a little jumper, and that's on every one of them. Every one of these wired exactly the same. Right here is a red power. Well, I'll say a red power. It's the pull, the pull positive. And it'll say it down on the side of your driver, all these words that you can see right down here. It's the pull positive. It runs up here. And I'm just going to assume that it's these are your input slots into your breakout board. I'll just assume the very first one is this one. I don't remember wh how I set these up. I just have to unwire it all, but I'm not going to do that today. So there's one of the positives, and you can see right beside it a negative. And so that's port one, maybe. That is port two. And so from there, you can see in this one, I have a white tied in here with this jumper. That actually jumps to the next uh, driver. And see, see how screwed up I've got this? I've got yellow and greens on this one. I, I just didn't have enough wire when I started all this. So, so then your black goes in right here in the fourth slot. I've got two on the very end that are open, but it goes in the fourth slot and I showed you over on the breakout board, it was in the second position of that very first uh, input port. And so by doing that, I mean clearly I can see since I used yellow and green, I've done them in order this way. This is the one I was just showing you. The second one has the yellow and green going to that one. And then the others are red and black, but they are all wired exactly like that. And I, like I said, I've got jumpers there. I've got a jumper from one to three. I've got a jumper from three to three on the next one. And then on that one, I actually ran the jumper from the first one over here and then a three on the next two. And again, like I said, I don't know exactly the theory behind that, those jumpers, but the guy I was watching and was reading his stuff he really knew what he was doing. His worked. Mine works. So that's what I went with. Okay, the other confusing thing here is dip switches. 
Learning this little pattern, it took me a while to find this. As you can see, we're upside down right here, but you can see one is up, two is down, three, four, and five are up, six, seven, eight are down. And it is the exact same pattern on every one of them. I'm going to leave it right here for a second, if I can find it again in my camera, and just let, let you get a good look at that so you know how I have them. These bottom wires here, these are all input ports. I mean, all of these all the way around are input ports, but these are the input ports for the drivers down here at the bottom. Over here on the side, you're going to see some more input ports. This yellow and blue wire, that actually goes to my emergency cutoff button which is right there. You can see that it's got yellow and blue wires coming out the side of it. And so I've ran it right there and I've put the blue in the ground and the yellow in the P10. So the red hot wire right there I actually could take out. I had initially tried to put limit switches on this thing and just had all kinds of trouble with them. I just finally threw it away, threw away the limit switches and gave up because I was standing here watching it the whole time anyway. Okay, so right over here you can see I've got two wires coming in. One with the black and white stripe and a black one there. And one goes to a ground, the plain black one goes to a ground. The black with a white stripe is going to pl plus five volts. Now the, that is actually a powered breakout board. You have to have a little bit of power running to it. So the way I accomplished that was just went to old Walmart and this bottom deal right here is one of those adjustable cell phone chargers that you can change the various volts and I bought one of those cut the end off of it and hardwired it to it and that's my power to it so I mean all those this isn't just a real technical description of this entire box and all the the wiring it shows you how my wiring is done and what I got to work uh, my fans on the end, you see them here. These cords that are all just randomly laying around down there, that's them. These great big bricks at the top of the power strips, that runs a fan each. And so outside the box, just to show you, I've got power strips mounted to my uh, the end of my box. So I can plug various things in, or I can plug fans in, I can run the power for the breakout board, and so I just kind of set it up like that. Well guys, I mean that was about it, I mean that was just kind of a rough overview of it, but it'll give you a good idea, I mean I shot, I think I shot footage slow enough that you can see exactly where I put the wires to. Uh, the only thing I'm going to swap up here and say is, by tying all the power sources in series, and tying them all together, it, your one drawback there is you don't isolate the system as much. Meaning that if this motor right here that's right above my head, if something went wrong with it and I had them each driver tied to one power source, it would be easier to track. I would be able to hunt down, okay, well it's not at the driver and the power source isn't working. So I mean it would just isolate it. By tying them into series, if I have a power issue, I've got to go through all four of them to determine where my power issue is. Uh, that's the only drawback to tying them in series. The reason I did them in series, it just kept my box cleaner. I mean, I don't have wires running all over the place. And uh, like I said before, uh, all the jumpers and stuff, this, I got this off of another website and this guy had a good diagram of it. His was working great. It was the same exact equipment I'm using. so. I just went with what he did and did all the little jumpers back and forth from the drivers and it's worked well. So right or wrong, I don't know. I don't remember all the information I got from this because it was a long time ago. I mean I did a lot of research and I used to be able to tell you what all the pull plus and pull minus and all those meant. I don't anymore. I, I mean if I had to I could go look it all back up and I would do the research and figure it out. But I really don't know, remember all of it anymore. So the breakout board I'm using there, I think it's a 1305, and it's a pretty common one that comes with these sets, these kits, for your drivers and your motors. And uh, it, 
it does the job. Now, I would eventually like to upgrade that because with that driver or with that uh, breakout board, I can't hook my VFD, my inverter that goes to the spindle. There's not a place there for me to hook into it. And so I'm actually manually operating my spindle, and by manually I mean physically turning on the spindle and then starting the program. If I could wire the VFD into the breakout board, I could run the spindle and turn it on and off from Mach 3 from the software on the computer back here. And that'd be nice. I just haven't got there. And uh, at some point I figure I will. I just haven't yet. I mean, right now this is working great, so, you know, don't fix what ain't broken. I mean, that's kind of one of those deals. So, guys, anyway, that's about it. Uh, if y'all haven't done so yet, please subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time. Oh, mercy. The bear to the neutral, the white to the... I'm sorry. Dang it. To each his own on the wiring stuff. I'm no expert at wiring. I just, I'm just decent at being able to read the stuff and make it happen. So, anyway, <clears throat> that's about it for this one, guys. And... I don't really like this whole thing.